The book of Psalms. We are in Psalm 140, beginning our study in verse 1. And this is study number 66 in the book of Psalms. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men. No one, I think, wants an enemy. But if you have to have an enemy, it's better if they are evil. If a good person doesn't like you, well, then you know you're probably in trouble with God. If a bad person doesn't like you, or if you have to do bad to be liked by someone, then you're probably in pretty good spiritual shape. <clears throat> so he says, Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their heart and stir up wars continually. Bad people spend a large part of their time thinking up new ways to be bad. In their heart, they stir up wars. They think evil things in their heart and then it comes out in their actions. They make their tongue sharp as a serpent's and under their lips is the poison of vipers. And out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So when you hear inflamed rhetoric or nasty words which are designed to stir up hatred for others, then you know the person speaking is evil and it's a good idea to stay away from them. For guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked Preserve me from violent men who have planned to trip up my feet. A person really has to be puffed up with arrogance, really full of themselves, if they are convinced that they are justified in destroying others. Talk about self-proclaimed judge with evil souls. That would be them. And the writer asks for deliverance from that, for those sorts, from those sorts of people. Verse 5, Arrogant men have hidden a trap for me, and with cords they have spread a net. By the wayside they have set snares for me again. They who would try to trap the innocent, they are called arrogant. Humble people don't, don't hurt others. Humble people are too busy being grateful for God's mercy to think about hurting someone else. 6. I say to the Lord, Thou art my God. Give ear to the voice of my supplications, O Lord. In other words, God, You're my God. That's why I pray to You. God doesn't promise to hear the prayers of those who do not honor Him as God. He doesn't promise to hear the prayers of those who put other things before Him. But he will listen to the prayers of his people. Verse 7 O Lord, my Lord, my strong deliverer, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Soldiers used to cover their heads with shields, consequently. When he talks about God covering his head, he's saying that God keeps people from hurting him. 8 Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, do not further his evil plot Sila. in other words don't let don't let the bad people do what they want to do because if they succeed they will add arrogance to their list of sins verse 9 those who surround me lift up their head let the mischief of their lips overwhelm them David had to put up with trouble that came about because people were saying bad things about him and here he is asking God to put that trouble on those who brought it on him it's really hard to fight slander it's almost impossible to fight slander 10 let burning coals fall upon them let them be cast into pits no more to rise in other words David is asking God to punish bad people with fire fire which they will not escape 
and we know that if people will not repent, God will definitely do that. 11. Let not the slander, let not the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil hunt down the violent man speedily. An evil speaker, a slanderer, is someone who spreads malicious lies. David is saying, don't let liars be accepted in our society. Liars are like a spiritual infection. When they are accepted and their lies believed, their evil influence spreads and causes a lot of trouble for a lot of people. And sometimes their full effect is not known for generations, sometimes until eternity. Slander, malicious lies can do a horrible amount of damage to a lot of people. 12. I know that the Lord maintains the cause of the afflicted and executes justice for the needy. In other words, God is on the side of the victims. He will fight for them and be fair to them. Someone says, I wish he would, I wish he would start. He will do it once his grace for bad people has run out. God hasn't been up to bat yet. This life is the top of the first inning. Eternity is the bottom. The bad guys are up right now. God will be up in eternity. Eternity exists in part to make right the wrong that happens right now. 13. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. The righteous refers to God's people. God works in his people to make them better people, holier people. And in the end, God's people will win. We must, because it says, the righteous will thank God. Thank God for what? Thank God for good things like no more death or sickness or sorrow. We're having to deal with bad people who do hurtful things. In the end, the righteous will win. God's people will win. Psalm 141 I call upon thee, O Lord. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to thee. Verse 2 He says, Let my prayer be counted as incense before thee and the lifting up of my hands as, as an evening sacrifice. David wasn't perfect, but he was smart enough to know where to go when he was in trouble. And where he went was to God. He was very fervent and very urgent in his prayer here. And I believe God likes this kind of prayer. Because fervent prayer indicates that we mean business and that we know that God alone can help us. 3. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. The mouth is the front door of our soul. Through that door, words enter, enter into the world. And since bad words can cause all sorts of trouble, David is asking God to be a doorkeeper by his mouth. Stand guard. And do not let bad words come out of my mouth, is what he is saying to God. 4. Incline not my heart to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. In other words, stop me from wanting to do what is wrong. If one is not willing to pray that prayer, Lord, stop me, from wanting to do what is wrong. If they're not willing to pray that prayer, they really haven't repented. 5. Let a good man strike or rebuke me in kindness, but let the oil of the wicked never anoint my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. If a good, if a good person is angry with us, then we should at least consider what they have to say and examine our life by the Scripture. Maybe we're innocent. But it could be a spiritual wake-up call for us, too. Look at verse 6. It 
says, When they are given over to those who shall condemn them, then shall they learn that the word of the Lord is true. In other words, one of these days, people are people will reject their bad leaders. One of these days, people will reject their bad leaders. It may be too late. They may have followed those bad leaders right into hell, but sooner or later, people will know that they should have followed those who taught Scripture instead of those who despise Scripture. 7. As a rock which one cleaves and shatters on the land, so shall their bones be strewn at the mouth of Sheol. Not just dead, but cut and scattered outside the grave. And I don't know exactly why God inspired David to write this, but I'm smart enough to figure out that it isn't talking about something good for those who are evil. 8. But my eyes are toward thee, O Lord God, in thee I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. And so David kept his God focus. His focus was more on what God would have him do next rather than his present unpleasant circumstances. That's really the way to be. Our focus should be on what God would have us do next. The next thing that God wants to do wants us to do rather than our unpleasant circumstances. He was more interested in thinking about God and his promise of a good future than the present ministry, or misery. Verse 9 and 10. Keep me from the trap which they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked together fall into their own nets while I escape. People use traps to catch animals. You know, they make everything look safe and even inviting so that the animal will be lured into the trap. Our enemy, the devil, sets traps for us, and he is smart. He won't try to catch a Christian with something that looks evil. He will use something that looks good, and maybe even seems holy. He is the master deceiver and the master trapper. That's why we need to stand the word. That way, even though we may be lured toward the trap, we will jump out before we get caught. Psalm 142 I cry with my voice to the Lord. With my voice I make supplication to the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. Which doesn't really prove anything since evil people cry out to God in blasphemy. But he gets more he gets more specific in the last part of this verse when he says he makes supplication to the Lord. See? He cried out to the Lord, but he wasn't angry at God. He wasn't blaspheming God. He was respectfully asking God for help. He says in verse two, I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. He's telling God all of his troubles, and he's telling God about everything he thinks that is wrong. That's actually a very good way to transfer the things that bug us over to God. The important thing is to do it respectfully. And also that God, also trust that God will take care of it in the best way possible. Three. When my spirit is faint, thou knowest my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Sometimes, David's spirit was just overwhelmed. That means there were times when he did not feel brave. There were times when David didn't feel like fighting his trouble or enduring it either. There were times when he just got sick of it all and wanted to run away from it all. Four. I look to the right and watch, but there is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No man cares for me. No one wanted to know David. It was too unpopular to be on David's side at this particular point in his life, so he, he was left alone. 
Of course, Jesus knows how that feels. You know, he was very popular when he was feeding everybody. When he was feeding thousands of people with five loaves and two fish, he was very popular when he was healing people. When he started preaching the pure truth of God's word, though, he lost a lot of fans. And the night he was arrested, everyone took off on him, even his disciples. And so, sometimes, standing up for what is right is going to make you feel pretty lonely. Five. Let a good man strike or rebuke me. Oops. Wrong chapter. Sorry. 142 verse 5. I cry to thee, O Lord. I say, thou art my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. What are you going to do? And where will you turn for support when everyone is gone? Well, there's only one place left in a situation like that, and that's God. It's either God or total despair. Some people choose suicide. David chose God. And so he says, I cry to thee, O Lord. I say, thou art my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. David was about as close to being destroyed as one could be without quite being destroyed. As a result, he asked God to attend to his cry. In other words, in other words, now would be a real good time for you to answer my prayer, Lord. I'm kind of like at the end of my rope. Verse 7, Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to thy name. The righteous will surround me, for thou wilt deal bountifully with me. If you are innocent, but you're sitting in prison waiting to be hung, and someone who believes in you helps you to escape, you're going to say some really nice things about that person. And David will appreciate God more than ever if God gets him out of this hopeless mess that he's in, because he knows he's innocent too. And that's why Christians should appreciate God more than anyone on earth seeing He has taken us off the road to hell. He has rescued us. He's rescued us. Even though we're guilty, He rescued us. I think we'll stop right there. And we'll pick it up in Psalm 143, verse